go in order. Um, Lori, why don't you go first and um, share so, sort of what you've been experiencing and take it from there. Sure. So quick overview. Good afternoon. My name is Lori Menico. I own Conceptual Communications, which is a full service marketing firm. Uh, we do focus in crisis management, but we have a unique niche in the market. We work with a lot of cities here in Broward and uh, most notably after the tragedy of February 14th at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, my firm was hired to provide crisis communications to the city of Parkland and they've now been our client for the past three years. So, you know, you asked for a nugget and I don't have anything new, but I do have something that has been reaffirmed in terms of branding, which is the more you can do on the front end with your brand before things get crazy, the better. So, you know, we represent six, eight, 10 different cities at any one given time. And everyone was thrown into COVID and had to communicate really fast. So that meant leveraging digital media like we've never leveraged it before because we couldn't do anything in person. There was no hold an emergency commission meeting and pile everybody into the town hall. So it was really kind of good that a lot of the cities we've worked with, we've worked with them now for three, five, 10 years. And we've had banks of graphics because we've been through hurricanes before and things that we were able to pull that were on brand with the logo on there, the right look, the right feel. And we were able to just kind of quickly get moving because, you know, I don't have a team of 50. Like I know a lot of you, I have a team of nine. <laughs> So when everyone needs something at the same time with something like a pandemic that no one's been through before, being prepared in terms of your brand and doing things in advance, whenever, I know we're all always busy, but whenever that time is like, hey, we don't have a huge project due this week, if you rep clients or it's your own company, that's the week where you're like, all right, let's figure out let's bank 10 images for a social media that's ready to go where we just need to update the wording. And if something happens where we need to message fast, at least we have this here ready to go. Um, that was really the huge reaffirmation and any client that had ever complained possibly in the past about using billable time on something we don't need right now. I think that just got <laughs> totally, totally, uh, rectified in that moment. So that, it's, that's it's like hurricane big, preparation. Yeah. yeah, that's my big piece of advice. Oh, that's an excellent piece of advice um, in terms of preparing. You know, I like to tell my clients, you prepare for the worst and hope for the best. So I, I think that's um, a wonderful piece of advice for those of you who've maybe not been in crisis management before. Um, so to, to know about Lori's uh, company and what she does and their expertise, I think, is really valuable. So Lori will be answer, answering some of your questions later. So let's go to Chris. Chris, um, we got a lot of questions at the very beginning about video, maximizing video um, and, um, and even how to, um, you know, edit video, very specific. So if you could talk a little bit about what you do. Um, and uh, answer some of those questions, that would be great. Sure, no problem. Hey everyone, my name is Chris. I'm the owner of DNC Media. We are a full service video marketing company here in Fort Lauderdale. Essentially, we help people connect with others online, get more customers online, build trust, all using video. Um, video is just an excellent tool, especially right now. I'm sure many people here have been struggling with not being able to be face to face or sell face to face or connect with people just the same way you could, even if it's just clients and whatnot. So a lot of what I do and we work with on clients is helping them do that uh, with video. So some of the questions that came through initially were all about, um, you know, how to edit videos and how long should videos be. Um, I wanted to, I'll answer those first. Um, one, you know, you need to be looking at video, not just as marketing, but a way to kind of also stay in front of people and build trust, establish yourself as a more of a thought leader within your industry, and also uh, just connect people on a deeper level. So it's not just marketing videos, right? You can be sending video messages instead of an email 
to just say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Client, you know, hope everything's been going great. Just wanted to send you a quick note, you know, and they see your face and they're smiling. It's just so much better than a written note. Everyone is kind of craving more connection these days and it's just a good way to continue doing that. Um, or even just posting on social media, you know, thinking about documenting instead of selling, right? Hey, here we are, we're starting a new project for this client or hey, you know, just finished a, a project for so-and-so and here's a great testimonial. Being able to position yourself in a way where you're not saying, hey, hire me, hire me, hire me, hire me, because then people aren't gonna wanna really engage or pay attention to any of your content, but more so take them into kind of like a day in the life. What are you, what are you doing with your business? You know, for me, I show, hey, look, we're editing this project. Hey, we're out here shooting this project. Hey, we just finished this project. Take a look at the finished version of it. And you can be doing the same thing within uh, your company. So say you're a realtor, instead of saying house for sale, house for sale, house for sale, you can say, hey, here's five things you didn't know about downtown Fort Lauderdale. Here's five restaurants that are open right now and are, and are practicing all the safety guidelines really well. You know, you can put that into a video form where people are gonna connect with you and actually build that trust over time. Um, so I don't know what other notes that I have here. And just some other stats to just really drill in how powerful video can be online. First, 80% of all internet traffic by 2022 is going to be video. The trend is going towards video. I consider this time to be almost like when websites started coming about. You know, video is here. It's not going anywhere. It's only going to become more and more popular over time. Videos are 89 times more likely to be shared on social media than just a photo. So if you have an almost a 90% chance of getting your content in front of more people, I think you should take that. And then lastly, on a landing page, a video can help convert people almost 80% more, up to 80% more, I guess I should say. So once again, it just shows how powerful this stuff can be. And I think it's something every business, personal brand, whatever it may be, should really start incorporating into just their daily routines. Okay, great, thank you. And Lauren uh, has been a key player with us um, and certainly in Fort Lauderdale. And I know, Lauren, there were some questions that you were most interested in an answering for people and, and sharing your nuggets of wisdom. So take it away. Okay. I have a lot to say, and <laughs> it's really a tough act to follow these two, but um, a lot of what I want to talk about has to do with what Chris and Lori just talked about as well. But First things first, I'm Lauren. You probably know me formally as the owner and founder of LBMG Marketing. Um, I went through this transition and pivoted just like everyone seems to have done here in the last six months. And I sold my company to a company that hired me and then it didn't end up working out. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, like, what do I do? Thankfully, I was able to get my clients back, which was so awesome. But I've also just exploded with business here in the last month. And I think a huge part of that was me really clarifying my miss, my mission, my message and what I want to do. So what I do now is I work with personal brands and small businesses to help them define and market their purpose, promoting growth and increasing their revenue. And my whole emphasis on this is while having a lot of fun in the process. So the company's name now is Brand Good Time. And I am the kind of the face of it. I work one-on-one -on -one with clients, but I also do um, website build outs and I do brand consulting sessions for people who are just like, you know what, I'm capable of doing this between me and my team or just me myself, but I want to talk to somebody. So I help kind of entrepreneurs and small businesses lay the foundation for how they're going to be doing their marketing. So what I want to talk about today kind of ties into video and brand awareness and content and all of that, but at the core of it would be a story, right? So every business starts with a story. There's a reason you created your business. And if it was to make money, that's not good enough. I don't like to work with people who are like, oh, I just started my business so I can make money. I just don't think that in today's world, if, if your brand is not purpose driven, if there's not something at the core that you're looking to do, to move to anything, you're not going to, you're not going to reach your ideal consumer in the best way. And you're not going to be very clear on who your ideal consumer is if you're just like, I want to make money. So some of the questions I got were, how do we set ourselves apart from the rest? And in a world where so many companies are online and making digital efforts, how do you stand out from the crowd? So I want to kind of go back to Chris and what he was talking about with video and, and how video is going to be so crazy and important by 2022. 
that reminds me of, you know, a friend I have who did a huge van build out. She's a pilot. Okay. So her and her girlfriend are a pilot and they are, tra they're called the flying couple and they're building their brand right now, but they started with a build out of their van. And every single day she goes on her Instagram story or reels or her IGTV and she's, it's almost like reality TV. Like I'm getting a glimpse into her life and seeing what she's up to. She is doing this to kind of build the foundation for the business she wants to build by building this audience and growing her business, right? Her eventual business. That is so important with, with brands in general, whether you're a personal brand or a small business, a story has to be incorporated. So I have a couple examples I want to give you guys because I know this is this applies to personal brands, people who are just going to have their business around who they are and the service that they offer, but then to up into companies that are bigger brands and selling product and, and other services. Um, so I want to read this quote. It's facts tell stories sell. So if you're out there marketing facts about things in your industry, that's great. But what story does that tell? And within that lies all of the content you can put out there. So I really like to have my clients walk through a process where you're putting out your core pillars. What are the content buckets that you're going to pull from and what stories can you tell within there? For example, one of my core content buckets is a uh, millennial entrepreneur. And one of the stories I like to tell is how my parents were both in corporate America and they climbed the ladder. And I learned that term from like a very young age. So by 10 years old, I was like, well, I don't see, like, I see the first rung, but I, I, I don't see rungs two through nine. I just see one and I see 10. So I kind of knew at a young age that I wanted to go down this entrepreneurial path. I wanted to have my own business, something along those lines. And so that's a story I tell, and I tell that in multiple ways. And a good way to do this is to sit down and write out a story that has to do with your business. Maybe it's you as the founder and how your business came to be, write that out. You can use that in nine different ways. You can make a video with that. You can do an Instagram post. If you cut it down, the whole email or the whole story can be an email. It can be a blog. And then you can repurpose that content down the line. All this is to say that people purchase through emotion. So if you're telling a story and you're getting people hooked into what you're talking about continuously, they're gonna, you're gonna build that brand affinity. You're gonna build that brand loyalty once they make the purchase because they're tied into you and they're tied into the brand, which is like an image of who you are. Um, there's a couple, there's two examples I wanna give when it comes to brands like this, bigger brands and how they use story. So it's a little different, right? We're talking about personal brands and small businesses here, but for some bigger brands that you may recognize, there's two I wanna talk about. One would be Away. Does anyone know who Away is? Okay, cool. It's the suitcase line. Now, does anybody know about their magazine? Okay, it's called Here. And the company started it and it was just their employees and it was sharing stories about traveling and everything. Um, so let me see, I wrote this all down here. They started a magazine as a way of sharing stories and pictures that they picked up on the road, but now they flipped it to their consumers. So they have an online publication and a publication you can pick up in select locations, exploring places through the lens of local, creative, and influential people. And so this has built, like, they have this whole storytelling sector in their brand that ties back into who they are, and it's just another avenue for them to get more exposure and get more business. Um, on the flip side, GoPro, we all know who GoPro is, right? a huge push for them in their marketing is YouTube. And they actually use UGC, which is user generated content to promote that. So they're using these videos in a first person perspective and their YouTube channel is just, it's blown up. It's huge because of this. And that is like their, and oh, the other cool thing about that, I just get so excited. But the other cool thing about that is they're actually engaging with these people in their comments too. So people are commenting on the videos, GoPro is going in and engaging with them. And again, that, that builds brand loyalty because these people know like, oh, this brand recognizes me. They're going to engage back with me. So that was a lot of information. I'm sorry, but. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's great. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, I, I just want to touch on one thing that everyone has said here that's really important. So I want you to catch this theme that everyone's been talking about. Um, it's actually, uh, for those of you who are very scientifically oriented, this is brain science. And the brain science is the part of your brain where you make decisions is actually the emotional center of your brain. 
Okay, so I'm going to say that again. Neuroscientists have discovered that decision making, the place in your brain where you make decisions, is in the emotional part of your brain. So for all of us who like to think we're very data centric and very logical and very scientific in our approach, the answer is yes, you can be that way. And your emotions drive your decisions. So what everyone has touched on here is if you want to make your product or service appealing to someone else, it's really important that you understand that a lot of what they're going to do is use their emotions to make a decision. That's why storytelling is great and having them become emotionally drawn to why you do what you do. That's why videos are great because they're so great at bringing in the emotion of an event. And as Lori said, when it comes to crisis management, I mean, wow, everyone's at the edge when it comes to their emotions. So how do you deal with that very fragile emotional place? So, I mean, you have three great experts here. I hope you'll take advantage of that. Um, with um, some of the questions that you can ask now. Uh, they are all chamber members. We're all members of the chamber. And I want you to know, if you weren't aware, they have been giving and giving and giving. Uh, we did this original chamber chat right when the pandemic started. Um, and we thought we would do this follow-up chamber chat now three months later, because obviously everyone's businesses has, have evolved uh, throughout this whole pandemic and I mean, as Lauren said, you start off at one place and where are you now? So um, we'd love to hear what challenges you are having now and how we might help with them. Anyone want to start and raise their hand or do you want me to call you out from the, from the chat? Aliette? Hi, everybody. Um, as a financial rep, I'm, I'm highly, highly, highly compliant. There's so, so little that I can do, but I, I really want uh, to start creating videos for myself, but I have to kind of be a little bit more careful. Uh, so guys, do you, you know, I'm, how would you suggest that I, that I do stuff like that? That is not, um, I guess, basically the, the financial industry laws and, and regulations. It's like, I'm, I'm a, high as regulated as lawyer. So there's certain things that I cannot do and I have to be very careful. Sure, I, I can jump in for this one. So a lot of my videos that I do have nothing to do with video and video marketing and who I am or my company or anything. I'm usually, and some on LinkedIn especially, what I found resonates really well is when I'm actually talking about more personal development or just uh, you know something interesting happened and I got like a, a epiphany for it and like a life lesson type of deal but i'm just talking about what's going on in my life you know and hey you know some people reached out asked me what my morning routine is here's a video about that you know or hey uh you know i went for a run today and and it reminded me how when i slow down and just stick to my pace instead of trying to get from a to b in a super fast amount of time i actually get there quicker you know because i don't burn myself out so maybe the lesson here is to slow down for you know, and, and really just settle into your rhythm and whatnot. So you don't have to think about it as selling. And I know this was a big question that someone else had where it's like, it's not sales. You're not getting on video to be like, hey, I'm the man when it comes to making videos. If you guys aren't calling me, you're an idiot, you know, whatever it is. It's more so just taking people in and creating content that provides value. That's the biggest thing. So maybe you do have some, uh, some tips that it's like, hey, you know, uh, a lot of people always ask me, should I buy or rent, you know, and here's something I just saw online. I thought you all could take, get some notes from it or anything that, you know, someone else might get value out of where they're learning from your expertise. And the, ideally you want to create something that they ultimately want to share. So that's the best pieces of content, something that's providing so much value that someone says, you know what, all my friends. I'm going to be awesome for showing my friends this. I'm going to share that. That's what you want to be thinking about when it goes to create content. But even just, hey, sitting with uh, eating lunch with my clients today, you know, that's staying in front of people. And that's kind of how you need to, to shift the, it doesn't always need to be sell, sell, sell. That's how I think you'll actually drive people away. Yeah, Elliot, I, I want to give you an example of uh, something that happened in a BNI uh, meeting just this week. Um, I, had, I had given my my talk about marketing and I said you know people don't buy what you do they buy why you do it 
And, uh, and it was interesting how many people really took that to heart from a small business. This is a Simon Sinek video you can watch. It's a, it's a TED talk he did. You can look it up on YouTube. Um, and so the woman who was selling um, life insurance, you know, so the insurance industry, how do you differentiate yourself from all the other insurance people out there? Her whole talk was about why she does what she does. And I got to tell you, at the end of it, there wasn't a, I don't think a dry eye on Zoom. Um, it was really moving to understand on a, in a very personal level why she got into what she does. And I think that, you know, again, as Chris and, and Lauren and Lori have been saying, um, if, you, if you share with people um, ahead of time and are honest about yourself. Everything's gotten very personal these days. You know, business is not what it was 20 years ago where everyone was trying to stay very distant. People want to know who they're working with. And I think if you think a little bit about what personally drew you to this and what's important to you, I don't think you'll get into any of the financial regulation area is what we're getting at. Yeah, I would love to piggyback off that. What a lot of what Janet just talked about is she was telling a story. So like you see these themes here. The thing about story is it bleeds through everything. It bleeds through marketing, it bleeds through sales, it bleeds through culture. Um, there's commonality with story. There's, there's common ground that people come to and that's how they relate to each other. That's how they build relationships and find things to talk about. Um, at the beginning of quarantine, I started, I was, I was having a rough time in my business. This was right before I sold. And I went um, one Friday when something, I think my employee just quit out of me out of the blue. I was like, oh my gosh, everything's falling apart. And I went and I went to the liquor store and I bought two different bottles of tequila. And I was like, tequila Friday, this marks day one. Okay. And so then I went on my Instagram story every Friday and I was doing tequila Friday. I was pouring tequila, I was talking about the tequila and I was sharing like a really ridiculous story about my week or something about my life. And like, who would have known? Out of the woodworks came all of these people that I guess have followed me or people I know. And they're like, I'm making margarita today too. They tag me in their story. And it's like, everybody just came together over something so stupid and simple tequila, which I still follow through to this day. And I'm launching my podcast around it. And it's just all of these things that you don't know can come to life if you just start putting yourself out there a little bit. And like, you know, finding something that everyone else can relate to or that you're following or people who are wanting to follow you can relate to. And I think this applies to any industry. And I like what Janet says, this isn't 20 years ago. Uh, I was seven, but <laughs> this isn't 20 years ago. This is today. And we're in this world where everyone's life is can be out there. And it's not a bad thing. You know, you don't need to share every detail. But you know, there's, again, common ground people can find with some of the really cool things about who you are. To, to add to Lauren's point real quick, I started like, I basically had an old potato that started growing right when lockdown happened. And I started documenting me growing potatoes just on Instagram. And <laughs> like she was saying, I had like 40 people messaging me a day like this is insane. And I'm like, it's a plant growing. It's not that crazy. But it just showed, you know, people are looking for if all I was doing was just showing how busy we were and this and that it's like it brought people into my world in a way and that they could relate to. Uh, yeah, so the tequila What's your Instagram, me. Chris? I did not know about this potato. <laughs> it's Seebs, Seebs Gerard. I'll put it in. Oh, uh, wait, wait, I do follow you. How did I miss this? All right, okay. we got a lot of other people on the call here, Lauren. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'd like to add to what Chris said earlier about um, when creating content, it really comes down to providing value. Like he said, that's the most important thing. And a lot of times in sales and marketing, uh, we've been taught that there always has to be a close to action and a pitch. And that's really not the case now, especially if you're providing content on social media, on LinkedIn, don't always make it about yourself. Just see what you can offer to other people. And Chris probably knows the ratio better than I, but there is some statistic. It should be about, you know, four to one in terms of just providing value. And then maybe like 20% of the time you can do a pitch or talk about yourself, but you really have to flip the script from what we've been taught traditionally. It is four to one or five to one. People say four posts that are not about you and one post that is about you. So you, you're just about dead on there with the ratio. So, so hear that, everybody. Stop chest, what I call chest beating. It's not about you. It's about them. 
And the minute you start to turn the table and it stops being about you and it's about them, that's when you'll start to have some magic. You know, if you're just talking about, hey, who wants to join me for a shot, you know, on Friday or who wants to see my potato growing? I mean, hey, I'm in. <laughs> if I could add to that, that's a great point about making it flipping it and making it about them. I encourage all of you, if you have a website and it's yours and you control it, go to your about page on your website. And if it's all about you and your certifications and you and you and you, you're doing it wrong. It needs to be about them. You need to start your about page with a call to action. You need to give a little bit of your story, your journey, your approach, and then you need to flip it back onto them and say, hey, I've been through all this, so you don't have to let me help you X, Y, Z. It doesn't have to be just like that, but um, that's another thing I place a huge emphasis on, especially with storytelling. You have to hook them, but then you need to make it about them because at the end of the day, they're here for you. And why not try and get them right there when you've got them in their feels, you know? Yeah, I think that is the sort of the big secret when it comes to us getting our mar our services and our products out there to remember, you know, why we're doing this and what problem we solve because, you know, here's the reality. Everyone is really selfish. It all comes down to, yeah, what about me? So if you address the what about me, how I'm helping you, how do you solve that problem that's keeping your client up at night, you know, that three, what do they wake up panicked about at 3 a.m. that you will solve for them? That's the magic. That's what they're looking for. It's not about you. It's about them. I can jump in and offer a suggestion, something that we've actually been experimenting on for probably, I would say, 12 to 18 months now. So you know, you've heard this before when people talk about branding, you, you can't be all things to all people. So I think, you know, many of our small businesses, even, even ones that are direct consumer, there is a target audience that can be identified in there. And I think the quicker, you know, as professionals, we can make ourselves a resource for our clients in some way. You know, I'm looking at Anne um, and her husband with their publishing company. I mean, if Anne were to start a blog, hopefully it would, <laughs> you know, target some of her clients and small businesses and kind of offer some sort of resource to them. You know, you have to kind of offer something to get something in return, right? Um, and like it or not, it's easy to say we're not selfish, but everyone on here, if you own a small business, you know, we don't do it at the end of the day just to do it. I mean, it's our livelihoods. It supports our families and our homes. And so there has to be some reward there. And, you know, a kind of even way to get there is I'm going to put resources out and help my client base. Hopefully this is helpful to them. They're going to recognize and have, you know, my services or what I know reinforced to them, not in a salesy way, but in a way that's helpful to them and staying on your brand, back to your brand. So, you know, a couple of ways we've done this just to, you know, show that I put my money where my mouth is and I'm not just saying, do it, do it, do it. And I don't do it myself. Um, you know, we come up with, you know, our social media for my company comes up with topics on a monthly basis that are geared towards cities and public agencies. So we talk about the sunshine law and best practices around that. And we provide blog posts on, you know, how cities and agencies can navigate certain things and, you know, around hurricane season and how to reach your residents and how to reach residents that are underserved in your communities that maybe don't have access to internet in their homes. So, you know, these are issues we tackle and we don't do it because they're paying us to do it. We do it because we have this knowledge base and we're therefore showing potential clients, okay, these guys really know what they're doing, but in a non-salesy way. And I do think it's well received. I mean, and I have to tell you, if any of you are expanding your business and, and hiring employees um, and they're in, you know, in any age range, really, I always hear when I do interviews, I looked at other firms, other companies, whatever, you guys are so up to date on your social media. It shows that there's like a pulse there that always comes up. I don't ask them about it. It just somehow comes up. So I think it goes a long way too on the hiring side. You know, you're always competing for the best talent. 
um, especially in the South Florida market. So, you know, it does reinforce that as well. So I feel like it checks a couple of boxes to try to stay in that. Re it's always a safe space. So, you know, think about what you do, who you're targeting and what would be helpful to them. Uh, Chris, I have a question. Uh, a new member just signed up last week, Ron Spatura with Landmarks.Digital. Um, we have a digital firm uh, expanding into Florida and uh, up here in Annapolis right now. But mechanics-wise, um, the, you know, telling your story. So let's say you and I are having lunch and we're talking and I just take a short video and then I want to put it on uh, social media. Um, Mechanics-wise, simply do it on your cell phone and then download it. And can you talk a little bit about the easiest way to, to do that? Sure. So without going into too much technical talk, I use my smartphone, my iPhone for all my social videos. And what I found is it actually resonates with people better. Keep in mind, you know, and this is strictly speaking about social media, when people are scrolling through their feeds, you know, they're used to seeing non-professional video. Usually if it is a professional video, it probably is an ad. So what I found is just by doing, using my phone and recording something simple and you know, the camera shaking a little bit and it's just, it's way more real, raw and authentic. And that actually resonates with people a lot better. Um, and then I always put everything into square format and I add a title. So I found especially doing that and subtitles make a huge difference. 80% of people do not watch videos with sound on social media. So a huge mistake I see a lot of like other videographers or, or people that start doing video is they put all this time into developing a plan, shooting the video, editing the video, and then they post it. And 80% of the people don't know what they're talking about and aren't able to put on the sound because maybe they're at work or, or something, you know, they're just not listening to it with sound. So if you are going to get into that, there's also even services out there that can help you and you can just send them, hey, I got a quick one to two minute video and you make this into social formatting and they'll do it for you. Um, or you can find someone in house to do it. And it's, I use Adobe Premiere Pro as an editing software. There's a couple of different types out there, um, but it's just taking it, making it into square format. I always add a, a headline. It just helps stop people in their tracks gets their attention. And then usually within the first like three to five seconds, I'm really trying to pull someone into the video. If you so, aren't able to do it in that first three to five seconds, usually they're scrolling on to the next post. So just something that's, that's going to stop them in their tracks and make them sit for the minute or two, however long the post is about. So you would download it from your cell phone to box, not YouTube necessarily. I, I take it from my cell phone and then I put it into an editing software to where I am making it more um, social media friendly, I guess you would say. I don't know how to explain it without showing like a meme style video post. And which software do you find is easiest for the average person to use? Probably Final Cut Pro. It's, it's less advanced than Adobe Premiere. Um, and if you're just looking to use it for basic stuff, I would, I would recommend Final Cut. But Adobe Premiere is, they're essentially one and the same. There's, I, there's even a bunch of great apps now on the phone, honestly. I just, we have everything so, <laughs> so advanced that <laughs> we, we just do it how we do everything else. I, I just wanna take a moment. Mike, uh, where, how are we doing for time when it comes to the breakout rooms? I was gonna set them up for about 10 minutes. So whenever you'd like to go to them. Okay, like, go ahead, Lauren. Yeah, so no, I was gonna touch on the, um, the video app side of things because Final Cut Pro, I know and understand, but if there's something you're looking for on your phone for really just easy editing, um, especially with the new reels that came out on Instagram, uh, Adobe Rush is pretty good. And so is InShot, I found. I believe Adobe Rush is actually free. I paid for InShot for a year, so I'm like, I feel like I'm stuck with it. But um, it's it's pretty good too. You can overlay music, you can crop, like you can like trim videos and chop them up and move them around and put the music and the text and everything where you want it. But um, I've, I've seen Adobe Rush lately too, and it's pretty good as well. So I recommend those too, if you're looking to just kind of do something quick on your phone, chop up clips, add in text, music, all that sort of thing. 
Adobe Rush is surprisingly amazing. Like you have so much functionality on your phone, it kind of blows my mind. Are these <laughs> all Apple or can I use them on Android? Should be able to use them on both. Should be on Android as well. Okay, thank you. Quick question, so can I get my hand in real quick? Okay, we talked early and I'm sorry I'm late. Just wanted to make sure as far as having with, I work with a lot of nonprofits and they don't have people that can blog or to take the time to do that. How do we work around that? How can they make a suggestion that we can do? Cause I heard about blogging and things of that magnitude. I can take it. All right. Don't over promise and under deliver. <laughs> So, okay. so the, key okay. is if you're, the key is don't get a blog post, post up every week. If you have one person that's development and marketing in the nonprofit and maybe the executive director, <laughs> people okay. wear multiple hats, figure out yes. the best schedule. If it's one per month, then do one per month. If it's one per quarter, then do one Got per it. quarter. Uh, okay. Um, okay. You know, okay, we're Lauren, always faced with this too, because we bill like a law firm and people get certain amount of hours. So mm -hmm. they have 20 hours per month. We can't be pumping out blog posts every <laughs> week, but we have to be cognizant of that time. And it's the same with full-time staff. You know, I would say consistency is the leading factor in that situation. It's better to do it right and consistent to build your following than to be all over the place trying to do 50 things. Thank you very, very much. I will take that back to my nonprofits. Yeah, it, it's a no secret. It's just, yeah, you don't want to be a one shot wonder, as they say. You want to be, as Lori said, consistency will win every single time. Okay. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> no problem. I have a question. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rachel Friedman. I work in employer engagement at Florida Atlantis University. Um, so as a career center, we kind of have like two part goals um, or two part mission. So working specifically on employer engagement, we're all about, you know, connecting employers with the relevant talent that they're looking to get connected with, but also helping them, you know, like build their brand on campus. So what are some tips you have or suggestions you have on how we can better connect with employers in the community, maybe through like social media or through our website, do you have any tips on that? What do you can you define connect or you're just trying to like let them know what you do and almost like new business development? So yeah, um, just to be, I would say business development. Yeah, continue that business development. I mean, we're already on like social media. We're on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, obviously we have a, a website as well. Um, but you know, how can we better kind of leverage those tools to access employers and kind of get our name out there? Well, have you had success on any of those channels where you, you did something and like, whoa, that was unexpected? Or are they all just sort of puttering along? I would say that, I mean, it, it fluctuates. It fluctuates. Well, it fluctuates. Uh, what, I, what I do a lot when I start off working with clients is say, what have you done and what's worked and what hasn't? And do, you know, sort of like Monday morning quarterbacking. Um, mm -hmm. because it's amazing. If you go back and look at all the things that worked, you'll go, oh, what did they all have in common? So the first place that I'd start if I were you is to go look, you know, if you're, if you're already doing all these things and some are working better than others or some aren't working at all, you know, my first thing is, you know, don't stop doing the things that aren't working after you've given them the best shot, right? So what right. did work? How can you do more of what worked? You know, it's really important. I think what happens is we get very busy doing stuff all the time and we don't take a step back and do the 40,000 foot view of, you know, what are the analytics? It's really important. You know, I've talked about being emotionally focused, but, but data really does tell you a lot. And if something really resonated and really worked, it's worth taking a very deep dive into that and understanding why it worked, how it worked, who did it work for, and how can you do more of that? Yeah, excellent point. I think to add on to that too, um, I always start with the same, you know, figuring out what's working, what's not working and improving on existing systems versus like trying to start something brand new. So how can you use even past people that you work with maybe to start developing video testimonials or other case studies that you could put together? So even when the next opportunity does come up, you now have assets in place. And Lori was kind of touching on this in the beginning. You have assets in place now to help bring them in and close that deal? Or how can you put together a video that really explains the true value of what you do? And now you're backing it up with incredible visuals or even other case studies or whatnot 
so that once again, when you do get in front of people, you know, it's maybe you're closing one out of 10. Now you can close two out of 10 or three out of 10, just because you have stronger assets to fully explain everything that you guys do and all the value you provide. Right. Absolutely. I actually like that testimonial idea. So thank you. Thanks for sharing that. And, and right now, like I've been doing a lot through zoom, even with my clients, because it's so once again, people resonate with it, you know, so don't be afraid to even use your laptop or whatnot, just to gather stuff. And then like down the road, you can be worrying about more on, Hey, these testimonials are really working. How can we go deeper into that? And then you figure out that next plan.